It's Rare Whiskey Friday. I'm so proud of you for what you're about to do flawlessly. Yeah. On your market cigar. Welcome to Rare Whiskey Friday. We're about to try several different whiskeys. Sometimes they're large brand. More often than not, they are craft brands without a large level of distribution. If you should live in an area where you can get your hands on one of these bottles, you're welcome for the review. And thank you to the magnificent bastard who sent it in. It's a little, little it's like 90%. It's, like, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good. And I think in celebration, you should pour me a whiskey. Yeah, done. <laughs> okay, this one is from Titans of Whiskey, John Rosenbaum and Carmen Keller. Daniel, in the distance, do you hear that? I do. Could it be? It's likely John and Carmen. If, if history tracks and accurately, it probably is. And their dog. Really? All right, so we did a whole bunch of the starlights, but we ran out of room, and I didn't want to keep drinking. So this one like fell over into the next Rare Whiskey I got, Friday. I got a little accidental droplet on the hand there. This is kind of exciting to me because everything we've tried from Starlight, we've both liked. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Some more than others, but we've liked everything. This one's cool because they double barreled this with a normal American oak. Yeah. And then I had to look this up. Uh, Eric Waite would probably know what this was immediately. Mm. But it's a Seguin Moro Vanilla Toast Bourbon Barrel. So I had to look this up. What is a Seguin? It turns out this is a wine cooperage. Okay. It's a cooperage that specializes in barrels for wineries. Okay. And they, the art and science they've put into levels of char and toast and things like this specifically for wine. Yeah. Like if you want this wine, you need this toast combo and this on. Oh, so it's like freakishly expensive barrels. Yeah and freakishly nuanced in the level of toast and char because they're mostly dealing with wine. Yep. And they put this bourbon into one of those barrels okay. after American oak. So this is picking up a tremendous amount of color already. Oof. And this is a big, rich, heavy, Four year old. big, rich, heavy nose. Without it getting too, it's oily. It's not getting too, too woody or tannic though. This is so rich. Yeah. This is up there with, oh man, this, this is, is dense without being overpowering. It's rich, like dark chocolate without being like, I need to back off a little bit or the wood's too overwhelming. Yeah, it's a beautiful nose. If you like, ooh, like, um, ooh, what can we say here? That level of it's closer Dark, to Stag Junior. Like a Stag Woody, Junior. Dense yeah, but molasses. Some, some of the Balconas have that level of density. Yeah. And otherwise, it doesn't smell the same, and none of the flavors are the same. Right. But the level of density you get from it's, a Sherry Cask Isla, it's Smoky the, Isla. It's concentration yeah. of those flavors. It's almost like it was distilled. It's ringing in at 56.6% .6 alcohol. Okay, there's that, that accounts for a lot of the density. That's a very high proof. Oh, dude. I didn't think Starlight could improve. I know this is supposed to be Rare Whiskey Friday. <laughs> We're supposed to move on after first impressions. You know what? This but is, holy sh There's a lot of stuff going on. I will say this, though. Drier than I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. But I really like this. There's sweetness, but it doesn't ever get to the point of being desserty, sugary. 
It was just kind of like uh, the natural type of, was it fructose? I think it's a natural one. Yeah, it's a natural sugar with the dark wood oil, but then it finishes with a, like a dry, sawdusty kind of grain heavy, uh, grain dust, you know, corn. A note. rich wood oil, and there's some peanut in there too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think what you're calling peanut, I'm calling the dusty okay. grain dust note. Mm. Yeah, that's that ending wow. kind of trails off. Son of a bitch, if Starlight is not just kicking ass. Yeah, they, they need to be much more well known than they are. Ah, I really don't want to move on, but... That's an exceptional I'm whiskey. holding on to that one. That's... Son of a bitch. St <laughs> Guys, well done. Heavy. Okay. Uh, this is one of the Luxco brands, which is sourcing from an unknown distillery in Kentucky. Yeah. There's rumors it's probably Heaven Hill. It's a... Uh, it's one of those whiskeys that it's like, we're named after a 200-year-old history of whiskey and heritage and... The guy and he did important things and and so drink the whiskey that has his name on it. Right, it's one of those things. Okay, um, could be a good whiskey. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. But all we know about it is it's bourbon from Kentucky. Now that's hard to get. Yeah, super rare. <laughs> Super rare. Luxco is a St. Louis that's, company. That's why it landed on Rare Whiskey Friday. People, I don't know that people, unless they study whiskey history, realize uh, St. Missouri in general, St. Louis, Cincinnati, has a huge role to play in the history of American whiskey. Really? Huge role to play. So, uh, so tied into the river uh -huh. and shipping, and then during Prohibition, Missouri, very, very highly influential. In the illegal alcohol department. Maybe it's the <laughs> most underappreciated whiskey state. Yeah, Missouri. Oh, okay. Like, if you go look at the big things that happened in American whiskey, a lot of them took place in Missouri, and people don't realize that. I, uh, I lived there briefly as a kid. You ever watch... Um, Springfield, Missouri. Oh, yeah. The land of 850 churches and about 40 colleges. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I actually have family <laughs> members that... Uh, lived in Missouri, yeah. and were pastors of one of the millions, millions of churches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you ever watch, um, what's that show uh, with, about Atlantic City and Prohibition, and uh, one of my favorite actors, it's got the Steve Buscemi plays? The, the guy with the eyes? Yeah, Steve yeah. Buscemi. Boardwalk Empire. Yeah, 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 yeah. So George Remus is featured heavily oh, in Boardwalk yeah. Empire. See, he's all, he was all Missouri. Okay. Yeah. That was a big, it was one of the medicinal permits. Yep. He was one of the first guys, he was a lawyer. He figured out how to legally produce whiskey. And then he would like ship his whiskey legally, mm -hmm. have his own men mm -hmm. hijack the shipment and uh, rob it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then report it to the government as a loss, <laughs> claim the insurance type stuff, right. and then sell his own whiskey on the black market right. for 10 times as much money. Obviously criminal behavior. But I, I can't help but appreciate the ingenuity. Wait, I know this is Rare Whiskey Friday, but you, you gotta hear the story. So, <laughs> no joke, this is worth it. Are you ready? Right. George Remus was a bad, I mean, at one point he was like Oprah. He was so rich and so famous at house parties where he invited people to his house. Mm -hmm. He bought, at one party, he bought everybody a car. <laughs> Remember when this is? I wouldn't mind have uh, I wouldn't mind having super sketchy <laughs> friends if they were just handing out cars. So, at one point he finally gets busted mm -hmm. for illegal everything that he was doing, and he gets put in jail. And he leaves behind his lieutenant, his number two. You're the guy, right? And his wife to run the business while he's in jail. Mm -hmm. Unbeknownst to him, they're having an affair. Oh. And so they proceed to try to figure out how to cut him out of the business while he's in prison and can't do anything. Right. Right. He gets out of jail. He, on the steps of the courthouse, pulls out a gun and shoots his wife dead. Or his wife? Yeah. Wow. Right? Wow. Get, pleads temporary insanity because bitch made me crazy <laughs> and gets off. Huh. 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 <laughs> so I'm just that. That is crazy shit, man. Like didn't even try to pretend. Right. Like didn't hire a hitman or like. Uh, no, I did it. I was crazy. I was that? Fine. Like it's in fine. front of the court, like in front of fucking everybody. Are you crazy? Now? No, I'm good now. I'm good now. I'm fine just, now. Was I was crazy, <laughs> but now so good. So and at good. the time, I mean, I should just go. Really, I'm at the so time, good. the judge was like, "I get it." <laughs> like, oh my god, these terrible human beings. So on the nose. Uh, this is very, very traditional. Cherry. Oaky, um, some uh, brown sugar. 
Oh yeah, some brown sugar, some honey in there. It's just classic budget. They they bourbon. definitely got a right over home plate classic. Classic. Bourbon. Classic bourbon to put classic. in the bottle. Nothing to hate it um, about it. If you like just super traditional bourbony flavors. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of this distillery. John Clark gave us this. Who is? Um, oh, did we name? John Clark gave us both of these. John Clark is now a patron saint of whiskey. John Clark, you, you patron saint of whiskey. Well, it's hard. <laughs> nope, directionality doesn't make an impact. Okay. Um, so, filibuster. this is filibuster. This is okay. a story. Uh, Maratown, Virginia, found it actually in DC. Okay. Oh, I didn't actually release the safety cap yet. Um, release. Release the safety cap. Release the cord. That's like the, the least dramatic episode ever of the Pirates of the Caribbean. So you call it. When some guy goes, Kagong, release the safety clasp on the rum bottle. But you fix that <laughs> by calling it the corkin. The corkin. Release, release the corkin. <laughs> All right, so I, what I like about this, supposedly, oh, what is that? Okay. These guys um, have been sor mostly sourced at first. Yeah. But what we're getting to try here, good night. What we're getting to try here, Hi. it is. Hey, um, you know what I want to call Is the first our, thing they. You know what I want to call our podcast? Tight. No, no, no. What? I want to call it because we it's like a Patreon podcast. Oh. Uh, tight bunghole. Tight bunghole. Oh lord. Yeah. It's a tight bunghole podcast. <laughs> well, we know what kind of content we're getting. <laughs> They're just some regular content. That's one tight bunghole. <laughs> <laughs> but this is but I'm saying it's very, clickable. Very very professional <laughs> explanation. <laughs> because it is a professional explanation. Because as whiskey makers, yes, you gotta have tight bunghole. If we do that, it would be far funnier if we were always dressed up and really serious. Right. But the title was tight bunghole, and we just never acknowledged because how ridiculous night, that is. Nightmare scenario for a whiskey maker is if you got loose bunghole. <laughs> That's true. Like you experienced. I experienced it with John. Yeah, I did. You and John crawled into that container by yourselves and experienced right. loose bunghole. That's true. But. Right. That's we, want, we want tight bunghole. <laughs> I can't. Okay, let me let me get back to this. I'm sorry, filibuster. I think it's a good name for the bunghole. Filibuster, I'm sorry. Tight bunghole. So this is a single barrel of whiskey from their distillery that they made okay. as opposed to source. Two years, four months old, yeah. bottled specifically for liquor locker. It's like liquor a... Liquor locker. It's a, it's a sweet tea and granola... The light, very light, honey. A little bit of that pine note. You're getting so I'm not way getting that. back there. I'm not getting that. But it's closer to granola. I like I like the nose actually. It's not gonna be a mile high proof. What are we at? It's yeah, uh, it could be oh high. I'm gosh. guessing it's in the fifties. Okay. I was way off. I would have guessed like high forties, maybe fifty. This is fifty seven percent alcohol. Yeah. For all intents, but fifty six point nine nine percent. That is way higher than what no, I was expecting from the You can the nose. get it in the flush of of uh, like the wasabi almost, like that up your nose. That. I'm not getting that. <laughs> Somebody, uh, Alex asked me, are oh, there- that's nice. Are there um, things like uh, chemical vapors floating around a distillery that are potentially toxic? No. I know. And I say, well, potentially explosive, but not toxic. Right. Um, but then I started t uh, thinking about our meth making operation. Oh, right. And yeah. look, but we like the money and we, but don't, he, but we don't mind the he, smell. He specifically asked about the whiskey, though. Oh. So I don't feel bad for saying that there's no. That's fair. If you would have asked about the meth making operation. We cook that crystal meth because the shine don't sell. You know, we <laughs> lack that money and we don't mind the smell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. That's good. It's way more mild than I would have guessed for that hot. These are light, bright, sweet flavors. There's nothing heavy or dense. No, it's there's it's, nothing like thick, food. effervescent and sparkly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's nice. good. It's um just kind of like the you get the sweet 
the the corn shows up. For real. I would love to see what they keep making. Okay, I agree. I need you to turn around and not look, and then don't look at your glass, because I want you to drink something with no knowledge of what it is to see what your reaction to it is. I'm gonna do this. I need you to promise me you're not gonna fall in love. <laughs> it's just friends with benefits. Just don't fall in love with me. I don't know how to disguise the glass. Ah, I'm pouring it for myself too. Um, okay, come back. All right, without looking at the glass, if you can. Oh, the glass isn't here. Okay. No, it's it's here. But take a smell and sip. Try not to look at it. All right, that's a new make. Yep, nailed it. Wow, super sweet and bready. Yeah. Now take a sip. Are you getting wood char? Even though it's new make? On the back end, yeah. a little bit. Just right? that flash of like uh, like an ashy charry note. It's a smoked corn new make. Oh, from the smoking of the... Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Now, I wasn't going to get the chance to do that blind. I was curious as to what your experience yeah. was. But I do get, not in the notes. And it's not a flash too. After halfway mm -mm. through, it shows up and it kind of stays with you. Yeah, yeah, it lingers, but not on the nose. The nose is pure, bready, grain new make. Mm -hmm. With a little bit of a fruit note, I am, you know, now that I keep going back, I am getting a little bit of like an old damp campfire That's smell. That's the retro nasal. Yeah. Going back to the glass, it is like you hosed out the, right. the briquettes. They're all That's damp how you pronounce now. it too. Retro nasal. Just some regular conversation, talking about whiskey things, talking about chars and barrel finishes, and then you get to the word retro nasal. <laughs> and then you continue the conversation like you're talking about anything else. That's fair. This is from 10th Ward Distilling. Yeah. Two people got us this bottle. Harold Tipton, who's a magnificent bastard. Harold Tipton, you magnificent bastard. And John Clark, who we already patron sing to John Clark, you patron to It happens. It happens. Eighty percent corn, twenty percent barley. Corn and barley. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and they smoked the corn using the same smoking recipe that they used to smoke ham so, in their family. Real quick, this is Maryland, by the way, Baltimore. Real is quick, it Baltimore. Why would anybody smoke uh, mm -hmm. any of the Frederick. ingredients for a whiskey? What, what does smoking do? Uh. So in the germination process, you need to let it go so far and then start to dry, or was it just only for flavor? This is only for flavor. So the, the corn didn't even This is mostly corn. corn. Need, this isn't like barley. No. It's not like barley where you get put it in the water and no. it starts to germinate, you release the sugars that you can then, you know, turn into the, This no. was just for the just flavor. Just for the flavor. Okay. Interesting, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm... I would love to see this in a barrel. I would really love to see this in a barrel because I think uh, I like the new make. Right. There's no faults. Right. There's no faints. There's no funk. Mm -hmm. There's just a good new make. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would say, if you don't like the new make, you're not going to like the whiskey because there are things you can't fix with a barrel. Right. But if you do like the new make, and not for like, I want to drink this all the time, but it's just, it's a really good new make, then a barrel's only going to bring things out that you love. And there's an interesting layer of it's almost like new the way it's a, it's a thin layer but the way that a new toy smells yeah i'm getting that on the taste yeah and i would love to see what a barrel did to this mm -hmm. uh, specifically at a low entry proof like 110 right just to pull out all the wood sugars i'll the smoke i'll make it more specific if you got one of those like uh, plastic or the rubber squeeze toys yeah and you, and you, the smell, air. you smell the air coming out yeah yeah that smell that's a up. for me that's a rubber phenolic note i get in a lot yeah. of isla scotch yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. The, some of the smokiness um, presents as that kind of as a matter of fact spring bank is aggressively like that mm. yeah, yeah yeah specifically campbelltown all right you got, yeah. a good, you got a good lineup here. that's fun right it's a good lineup all right here's all right. a fighting drink if you fight me a fight for a friend if you steal me you steal your living and if you drink May you drink with us. Uh, 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 uh. It's a bottle, Lord. Uh, 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 uh. It's a bottle, Lord. Uh, 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 uh. I have no idea where you're going. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, we got West Strickland. The bottle, Lord. 